Now, if you go into most dental surgeries, you'll find that when the nurse and the dentist work together, there are three hands in the mouth. Clues in the title, guys. Four-handed dentistry. So. Okay, so when we're doing this technique, it involves the nurse using her second hand to retract as well as aspirate. And aspirating is a really hard job for nurses because generally dentists are in the way. So they do tend to use their armrests, use the chair, use whatever they can to anchor themselves and balance themselves so that they don't uh, fall over. So what we do with our aspirating is the nurse goes into the mouth first. I use my aspirator tip or my three-in-one syringe, uh, which I do have in my surgery so I use to retract the soft tissues. This then helps Martin because he doesn't have to think about retracting and using his mirror for retraction, he can use it for vision. It also means that I can see a lot better and it will help the patient because I can aspirate much more efficiently. For the purposes of this video we can't do everything 100% cross infection control so Sally and I are not going to be wearing masks so that we can talk to you. We won't be using our dental light because obviously that's going to interfere with the filming. Before any procedure, I like to set myself up in the correct posture so that I can try and maintain it throughout the procedure. Then we have to get our nurses to set themselves up and then set the patient up. So. Okay, for nurses, they need to be aware that they need to be a lot closer to the patient than they're probably sitting already. It means that the hip really should be in line with the patient's shoulder and we need to be high enough up, which is sometimes quite difficult with nurses' dental stools that may not go high enough and uh, that's why they tend to end up standing up. But if you can put your stool at the highest height and it'll give you a good view into the mouth and as close as possible. Now you can either work with your legs intertwined with the dentist that you're working with if the, the back of the chair permits. If not, you can just run your legs parallel to the dentist, but just try and maintain that posture where your elbows and your hips and everything is facing in the same direction. The one thing we try and get dentists not to do is to sit at 12 o'clock like they did at dental school, because then I'm pushing Sally away from the mouth and she can't be as helpful as she could to me. Uh, and also I'm going to have my foot control here on the right hand side. And often the dental chair is very low. To do all of this four-handed dentistry correctly, we have to raise the dental chair, move our foot control over to the left-hand side of your right-handed dentist, and then sit close together so that we can both work in the mouth completely together. When we're doing a procedure like a cavity or a crown prep, most dentists will hold the mirror in the middle. That is just the natural way we pick the mirrors up. But actually, if I do that, Sally can't see you because all she sees is the back of my hand. So two things I want you to consider. One. Hold the mirror right at the end, very delicately. You're not using your mirror for retraction, you're using it for looking into the upper teeth. The other thing I want you to notice is that I'm using a very small mirror head. The small mirror head is number two. Most dentists are using number four. The reason I'm doing that is that a number four mirror head, if it goes into the buccal sulcus or the lingual sulcus, so that you're trying to look at through the mirror for indirect vision for upper teeth, then it's too big. It just won't fit. It'll fit in these models because they're nice big, big heads. But most patients don't have big mouths. So I want you to consider using a number two mirror head. It's just a matter of getting used to it. Let's consider aspiration and retraction and cutting cavities or doing crown preps. First thing we need to remember is if you want to use indirect vision for upper teeth, then you're going to have to tilt the patient's head back so that we can put our mirror down in the sulcus or the lingual sulcus or the buccal sulcus of the lower teeth. For lower teeth, we're going to do it by direct vision and we're going to drop the patient's chin down like this. The other thing to remember is if we're in the upper tooth, I'm going to work from about a half past 11 position on the clock face. And for lower teeth, I tend to do most of my work from the nine o'clock position on the clock face. With upper teeth, if you're worried about getting parallelity on front teeth or doing a smile design, and you don't want to come over here to the front and push Sally out of the way, then you can tilt the patient's head like this. So now I am effectively working <clears throat> in relevance to the patient at 12 o'clock. I'm using a three-in-one syringe as my retraction and just a small aspirator tip with a flange. Now, if you haven't got a three-in-one syringe on your side, then you can always use a mirror and retract with that. I'm gonna place the three-in-one syringe in in the upper left quadrant first and then use the aspirator tip to retract as much of the lip as I can. Then I'll reposition my retraction so that I can get the lip and the cheek out of the way. So I'm looking to include as much light into the area as I can and give a little space for Martin to put his mirror. I go in at this point because I'm just using my mirror for looking at the upper teeth.
Now this is where it's critical that Martin holds the mirror at the end because if he moves his hand any further down it's going to start meaning that I'm going to have to lean to look around his hand which is a classic position for nurses uh, when they sit with their head sort of leaning to one side to look around so by maintaining the holding the mirror right at the end means that I can have a good view into the mouth. If I hold the mirror in the middle where most dentists hold it we go into the mouth and do some work then Sally really can only see the back of my hand. If I hold it right at the end and I do that, now hopefully you can see that she can see into the mouth, which is absolutely crucial for getting the water out of the way, seeing what I'm doing and basically helping me. Let's go to the front teeth. OK, I'll pass Martin a cotton wool roll, which will tend to tuck under the sulcus. I might swap hands for this uh, position just because it makes it a little bit more comfortable. I'll just sort of maintain the retraction there using the three-in-one tip, or I might use this just to hold the lip out of the way to stop the water spray from sort of collecting and going onto the patient's face. I'll then put the aspirator tip right to the back of the patient's mouth, which they, where they hate the water uh, building up. And then I can, by using the, the three-in-one tip, I can navigate around the mouth quite happily and hold soft tissues out of the way. My mirror is probably going to be out of the mouth so we don't get too much water on it. So I can do palatal, work my way around like that. Buckles, I'll help with the retraction so we can do a buckle. If we're doing cram preps, I may well just twist the head a little bit towards me and hold my mirror there or even do it by direct vision. So I can do my veneer preps or my cram preps. And for the upper right. Thank you. OK, again, I'll swap hands. I'll use the... Should we just turn his head slightly straight again? I'll use the aspirator tip towards the back of the mouth again. And then I'm going to use my retraction to actually retract the lower lip because you tend to get quite a shadow into the mouth. And I know Martin will want to place his mirror. So I'm going to move the lip out of the way and just hold that safely there. Again, my mirror is going in the lingual sulcus. And I can do my canine, my premolar, premolar as I work further back. Six, upper right six. And when we come to around there, I might move around to about nine o'clock in position just to be able to see by direct vision there. For lower right, we're going to apply the same principles. I'm going to place the aspirator tip and three in one syringe in first before Martin. So I'll retract the lip, place the aspirator tip in, and I'm going to use this to depress the tongue and retract the tongue. Now, if I feel that the tongue is uh, a little bit difficult to control, I may then use a mirror and then Martin will do the retraction on this side. So it depends on the patient really. But obviously this patient is fine, so I'll retract the lip and use my aspirator tip on the lingual aspect. I'll come round to 9 o'clock, 9.30 to do lower right. I might do some retraction, I might not, just depends on the patient. And then I can drill very easily by direct vision for five, six, seven buckles like that. Linguals, obviously, you're going to go right the way around the other side and impose on Sally's space, but you have to do it. Crown preps, straightforward, direct vision, don't need my mirror. Sometimes I help Sally keep the tongue out of the way as well, and we'll work together. It's all about teamwork. OK, for the lower anteriors, I'll pass Martin a cotton wool roll. We'll just place that. I'll probably hold that in place. And again, I'm using my... A suction tip to retract the tongue, hold it out of the way and then be able to dip to the back of the mouth to stop the patient from drowning. I use my mirror but not really for vision. Uh, I'm using it to help keep the tongue out of the way because some patients tongue is really quite difficult. This patient hasn't got a tongue so it's a lot easier. Uh, but I can see the linguals by direct vision. If I'm doing a veneer prep which I'm far more likely to do then I'll be working like this. Sally's just chasing the water, keeping the lip out of the way for me, so I can just concentrate with my loops on the teeth. So this is where it's absolutely critical that the nurse can see exactly what she's doing and into the mouth, because if she's sitting further back, she's not aware of what's going on in the mouth. She doesn't know if the patient's filling up with water or if there are bits of debris that are flicking around the mouth. So this is where it is critical that the nurse is sitting close enough so she can see exactly in the mouth. So I'll, again, on the lower left, I'll go in with my retraction. I'm giving myself an idea of where I'm going to place my aspirator tip. I'll place my aspirator tip in as far back as I can get it, and then again use this to retract the lip out of the way. Now, most dentists will retract the tongue like that. And this is not an easy thing to do because some tongues are so awkward and it just slips over the top. Why not use four, four fingers 
on the handle, to press the tongue, almost hit the lingual wall of the tooth you're working on, and then you work. And I promise you, lower left becomes absolutely dead easy to work with. Don't have a problem at all. Direct vision, working at nine o'clock, depressing the tongue. Doing upper teeth, I'll have the patient's head tilted back. I'll work, usually if I'm doing indirect vision, I will do it from the 11 o'clock, 11.30 position. And for lower teeth, drop the patient's head down. I move round to nine o'clock, do my retraction, and sit at nine o'clock to do lower teeth all the way around the mouth, apart from lower anteriors where I might be a little bit further back like this. But the important thing to remember is to move. Either move the patient or move yourself so that you can see properly. For upper teeth, dentists often try and do things by direct vision because it's easier. But unfortunately, this is what happens. You'll recognize this. I'll bend over because I want to see things. I'll retract because I feel I have to. And I'll bend over like this. And then for Sal to see anything, she has to bend over as well. The classic dental position for upper left. What are the benefits of this aspiration and retraction technique? Well, for the dentist, I can see what I'm doing. I don't have to worry about retraction. It's wonderful. I can just concentrate, especially with my 4.5 loops, on the tooth that I'm working on. And for the nurse, you do find that you're more balanced when you're holding something in both hands. And it means that we can see much better. We're going into the mouth first, so it means that we're looking at exactly what we're doing and uh, it makes the job more enjoyable. Patient? They're much happier, they're not drowning, and uh, they feel they're being looked after. So if you'd like to contact us to learn more about the courses that we run, please look on our website at dynamicdentistry.co.uk. Contact us on info at dynamicdentistry.co.uk. We can also actually come to your practice and train the whole practice in how to do these techniques.